Hey, how's it going? I'm still making this baseball game, and I'd like to do one more thing before I animate the batter. And I just want to get some sort of rudimentary scoring system going on. Uh, right now, if I run this program, you know, I've got this guy here for, as a pitcher. I've got the batter box. If I start it, um, the guy throws. And um, if I hit the space bar at the right time, then it'll bounce back. Uh, that's not happening right now because I haven't been able to hit it at 132 um, feet per second, which is about 90 miles an hour. It was 90 miles an hour that I did that for. Um, you'll have to go back and check. That's what I, th that's what I think I did. Um, so if I change that to something slower, maybe it'll be easier to tell if whatever I'm doing is working. Um, throw ball. Minus 132 miles per hour. Uh, let, I don't want two. Uh, 12 would be fine. Um, 12 might be a little bit too uh, slow, but in general, I'll I'll just leave that there because th that makes everything nice and simple for me to fix it later on. Well, let me change it to 32. Let's see what 32 looks like. Maybe I can hit it with 32. And okay, I can hit it with 32. 32 is still pretty slow, right? Um, if you actually threw a baseball like that, I have a feeling that it would hit the ground on you and so forth and so on. But this will let me um, actually figure out what happens and add some sort of rudimentary scoring system. So let's see what else is going on here. Um, I've got a velocity, blah, blah, blah. Now I need some way to score. Um, now... If I'm actually looking at what's going on here, there are two th places where I think I should update the score, right? I can update the score when the ball goes all the way off. I could just either side of the screen. So actually, I think I'll do that. I'll, I'll say that whenever the ball goes off the left-hand side of the screen, um, I don't add anything. Whenever it goes off the right-hand side, I'll score. All right, so I'll do something that will um, do the score there. Now, there are a couple ways I can do that. Um, one way that I would in a game, but I don't in the class, would be to add a property to the, act, to the batter that would um, keep track of the score. I'm not going to do that in, in this class because I want to try to keep um, those sorts of mechanics things separate, at least for this first class. Um, and, you know, add in only things that I need for the physics, things that I need to actually control those um, objects in those objects. I, I want to keep those things pretty, I want to keep the objects pretty pure because the objects are representing physical things. And this is a physics class as much as it's a computer science class, right? It, maybe even a little bit more. So, um... Let's see. What do I have to do? I want to keep score of things. So I want score. So I want throws, and I want hits. Those are the two things that I want. Um, and I want to. I'll put them in a list called scores equals hits and throws. All right, and that's the list I'm going to send to the um, draw function, to the view function. Um, let's see. So later on, I have to go to the view function, and I have to send it some um, scores, so, right? And then I have to come back up here to, to this guy here. The view function has all the, these objects. And it has the foreground, and it has the scores. We probably should really make objects for them. in In the long in the long term thing, I, what I'd do is in the foreground, I'd keep the buttons and I'd keep the scores. I'd draw them out all on the foreground. The foreground would be one larger um, collection of different objects. But again, that's that's a little much right now. Um, now, for the scores, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm just going to pretend I know what they are and where I'm going to put them. So uh, what I'll use is a game class thing that I've made for you called Screen Print. Now, the reason why I did that, if you um, look elsewhere, is that it takes two or three steps uh, to actually 
create a um, text output in, in Pygame. So instead, I use this screen print, um, and that uses, you know, I want to send somebody to the screen, I want a message, um, and my message can be whatever I want it to be, right? Uh, message one and a position. Um, and I'll say 50 50, that's a good thing. So that should be enough. It has additional things. You can change fonts, you can change sizes. That's not going to be important anywhere in this class. But when you're doing your final project, you want, might want to play around with it to make your final project look a little nicer. And we'll do the same thing for the other one screen print, screen message two. And that one I want to be far off to the other side, so let's say 450 and 50. So one's way over in the left-hand side, one's on the right-hand side somewhere um, a little farther in the middle. So let's make that uh, 650. All right, now I need to know what those messages are. What am I going to use as those messages? So what I should use for those messages are something that is some sort of text thing. So um, message one is all about the hits, hits space plus the string form of scores zero, which is the number of hits. So that's message one. So when I use this screen print, everything that I put in it has to be a um, string. That's not true, but uh, it's pretty close to it and throws plus string scores one. Okay, and hopefully now if I run it, nothing will be broken and then I can actually start updating. So you see I have hits and throws up here, but they don't mean anything right now. So it doesn't matter, throws doesn't update and neither will um, hits, right? So neither of those update. Um, throws, that'll be the easier thing to update, right? So um, so if I have a new ball, right, I can say throws plus equals one, right? So every time a new ball is created, the throws updates, or it should. All right, so um, let's see what's going on here. Do, 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 do. First thing is message two scores one. Print um, scores one. So that's not updating. All right. Um, Okay, so let's see what happens here. Did I... Hmm. So let me see. The um, throws is there. So I left a message up here. Hopefully I can solve this in a reasonable amount of time. Okay. If you know the answer, just tell me. Uh, seriously. Um, okay, so the throws number is updating in main. Okay, so but it's not updating in the other list. Hmm. I guess, I guess I'll have to do this a little differently. Um, so it, this isn't a pointer, I guess, to, this is not, I guess, a pointer to um, some list or anything like that, or it's not a pointer to that number, it's just putting that number in there. So what I'll have to do is update scores one 
all by itself. Let's see what happens now. Now, when it throws, it, it adds that in. Okay. Still nothing to do with the hits, but that tells me enough about what I was doing wrong. So, happens I've, I've gotten a little too used to keeping track of the pointers instead. All right, so let's see what I can do about keeping track of the hits, right? Um, so I think that's going to recall, that's going to re, re, that's going to make me send a message back, another message back. So right now, the result that I'm sending back is an object. Um, so what I probably want to do is also include the case where if the result is equal to score, so I've sent, I'll just send a, send a message back, scores a zero plus equals one. Okay, that should do it. All I have to do is figure out when I want to do that to score. All right, and so to do that, first I have to come back up to the engine, see what happens. If thing is in remove list, um, then uh, let's see. If not, fill contains ball, remove list, append ball, and then uh, out plus equals one, or if um, ball dot get position. So we have a get position for the ball. Zero is greater than field greater than or equal to field size is zero. So what I'm saying here is if the position of the ball is passed to the field, out is going to, e I don't know, I'm plus equal one, I want it to equal um, score. Okay. So right now, then out here it comes back after the pitcher update is either none or a new ball, and then this comes at, comes down here and checks to see if a ball, and then you know if it's a new ball, then it goes into the update and all that other stuff, um, but it's not going to be outside right, uh, outside of the field. So then this checks to see if it's outside the field. If it is outside of the field, if there is if there is any ball, but there's only going to be one ball, if any ball is outside of the field on the right-hand side, then you get a score. So first, is it out? Yes. Is it out of, out of the, that thing? Then yes, it scores, and that score should update there. So Let's see if that works out the way I want it to. So um, it breaks. Ah, so I don't have a field size. So what I'm going to have to do is that same thing I did there, field get size zero. No, no, I'll just do field size. So what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll get the field size. Field size equals field dot get size and hopefully field has a get size it's not breaking yet okay so it's fine with that let's see if I can hit it I've hit it let's see if it goes out and I get a score I do okay awesome so I had a little bit of a brain fart, but I still got it working, and it's it's a viable little thing. So that's how we're going to model everything from now on as far as scoring is concerned. Um, we might send it a number later on. Uh, you know, we might look at how far the ball actually goes and give it a score for that. I'm not sure. I, we'll find out. What we, we'll find out what we get later on. All right. So. Um, this looks pretty good to me, and hopefully it looks good enough to you. Maybe um, you can think about how you'd animate this thing and how you'd get a real, a real hit. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye now.